So I was uh, sort of horrified in a way by uh, having you know proved the four-dimensional Poincaré conjecture into uh, realizing I better learn some math. Well, that is striking how much you've done that. You know, just tried to enjoy the fact that uh, I was a mathematician and had the leisure and freedom to think about almost anything. My GoPlane friend had given me this tip that I should write a letter to a prof particular professor at Princeton, not just send a generic application. Ralph Fox, the knot theorist, uh, apparently was for many years in charge of the admissions process. And he said, just you know, write a letter to Ralph Fox telling him that you want to be a mathematician and you want to go to graduate school, see what happens. My mother uh, said, okay, this sounds like a good plan. I think it's great if you go to graduate school, but you should send a picture of yourself and I said, no, this isn't uh, proper, it's not politically correct, you know, it, uh, it doesn't matter what you look like, they only should be judging you on your intellectual qualities. And she said, I'm your mother, everything is show business. Put in this picture, <laughs> and she told me which picture to put in, and it was a picture that a high school buddy had taken of me standing on a little granite needle of rock near uh, North Palisade in the Sierras. Apparently the photograph flutters out and lands on the floor and Fox picks it up and looks at it and looks and sees it's an application and says, let's admit this one too. <laughs> so Ed Nelson swears this is true. Is so right? He swears this is true. Yeah. <laughs> what ended up sort of changing my direction uh, was a semester I spent in 1988 at Harvard in the fall. Witten's work on T, what we now call topological quantum field theory, TQFT, had just come out in a, a preprint form. Bot and Tabs were running a seminar that I was in trying to understand in Witten's interpretation of the Jones polynomial. And Atia was very bothered by this, and he asked Witten uh, at some conference uh, if there was an explanation in terms of gauge field theory for the Jones polynomial. So Atia understood gauge field theory enough to think this was probably right. And the story is that actually Witten worked it out that night and uh, changed his lecture. You know, the next day he was supposed to speak and he talked on this instead. The big message for me from this was that quantum field theory was this enormously powerful machine that in the hands of an expert could elucidate mathematical problems in a field where the expert in quantum field theory had only a cursory knowledge of the field that he was revolutionizing. I was immediately fascinated with the idea that you should try to build a computer that was based on whatever physics Witten was talking about, and then it would be able to solve these marvelously complicated problems. When did you go up to Microsoft? I started focusing on uh, computational complexity, quantum mechanics, condensed matter physics. I was interested in all these things and how it related to topology of anions, so what you might call now quantum topology. And I was a little bit overwhelmed by all these subjects, you know, sort of floating around in my head. And by, you know, very strange, sort of out of the blue coincidence, I was offered this research position at Microsoft. It was not because they th knew you were interested in quantum computing? Well, no, not really. One of my conditions for accepting the job at Microsoft is that really no one bothered me and I'd be able to do my research in quiet. And um, they honored this uh, stipulation or request uh, so strictly that after about um, six, seven years up there, six years up there, I felt uh, neglected. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that uh, no one knew or cared what I thought, you know. <laughs>